Hello there, it's uh, Karen here again from Crafty Little Miss Kay, bringing you uh, another little project that I've been making in the last week. Um, I had some time off work and I've put it to good use and I've spent a lot of time in my craft room. So what I'm going to show you today, these lovely little handbags that I've made for some friends when I go to um, convention on the weekend. Um, stamping up convention, it's a um, time when demonstrators all get together and get to see new products and share some fun time together and swap, um, do crafty um, little projects, just have a great time really and it's the weekend away, it's, um, you know, you can leave any problems you've got at home behind you and just forget about it and just enjoy yourself just for a, a day or two. Anyway, I'm making these for some team members of mine. Um, I'm not the team leader. Um, just as a little way of saying, you know, thank you for your friendship. And because uh, I've only been a member of Stampin' Up for just over a year, and they um, welcomed me when I joined and when I went to meet them for the first time last year. Anyway, so lovely little bags. I made this one slightly smaller. Uh, first of all, and then I realised there wasn't a lot of room, but it's still the, the, the um, little magnet clasp still holds. It can uh, just just close up nicely. It is a little bit full, and inside I've got some yummy chocolate. And also, because I live in Essex, South End is quite famous for its longest pier in the world, and I bought them all a South End rock as well, just for a little fun gift. So let's pop that back in there, and I'm not going to throw them back when close up right now. So I've got the same in the green one as well, so um, as you can see in the bottom there, but that folds and closes much nicer. And could you hear that lovely sort of like as the magnets catch? Okay, the magnets are encased so that they're safe, hopefully, from children. Obviously, if a child is determined to get one out, I'm sure they would, but I've done my best to keep them nice and, and child friendly. Um, so let's get started with one. I've decided this time to do the um, fresh fig, put it upside down so you can see the florals. These are the in colours for 2017-2019, so we've got another year of these yet. And um, the pink one was Berry Burst, the green one was Tranquil Tide, and I've actually run out of the other two colours, I use them so often. Um, but um, I'm going to be getting some more, I've got some more on order. Anyway, so this is the one we're going to make today. So all it is, is a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. I tried using a thicker paper, like a card, and it wasn't just work, wasn't just working right. And I just gave up and I said, no, okay, let's just go with the um, dis um, designer papers. Okay, so what I've done is, let's go on the right side here. To make the bag, just need a few bits of scoring. There's no cutting involved other than making the pieces for the uh, top of the bags. So first of all, 12 by 12 on here. So I've, I've already pre-scored these, but I'm just gonna go through it quickly with you. So you score it two and a half, and then you switch it all the way round. And you do two and a half again. Then this time you come back, so you're now your lines are going across horizontally, and you do four and a half all the way down, and seven and a half all the way down. That leaves you with a little square area here, which is three inches across, and the middle point is six. You just do a little notch there, turn it all the way around, find your middle point, which is a six, little notch there. Then you take the scoreboard away. And then what I did to make it easier to see, I actually turned it over the other side. And then with the, my notch is here and my lines are here. So I just got my ruler and just scored down here and on there to do two, like a little triangle shape. I did the same this end and that was it. Then I can put my scoring thing away. And then you fold and just burnish all those score lines like so obviously if, I'm, if you're following along and I'm going too fast please pause and while you catch up I'm just doing it really really quickly to keep the um, so I'm not sure how much battery I've got left on my phone and then what I did with these marks the, the marks I did here the scores I just very gently just eased with my fingers just to encourage it to come in and what you're doing there if I just bring the green one back just for a second you're actually creating this can you see that just creating that little effect in there okay so turn it around to that way so your um, your shaped bits are here and then what I'm going to do you can use wet glue you can use um, 
glue on a roll you can use the um, double-sided strips of, 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 of tape what I'm doing is I like to use the wet glue because it gives you a little bit of, of um, room to wiggle about if you don't get it right first time because I always manage to match up wrong so basically what you're doing is you're folding each one in half like this and then where these lines are here, these score lines here, you're actually going to just pop your finger in there just to help it ease over. Now this might be a bit difficult to see. I'm going to try and work out where I can position this so you can see what I'm doing. Basically I'm bringing that score line there to go level with that line there. So bring it over. And, so, and just meet it like that. And then the piece inside... This is Kakanda, let's just do it this way. Right, so bring it down like this. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and then just fold that line there. I've just got my bone folder and gave it a little bit of press just to make sure that it stayed. Do the same on this side. Just bring that fold line into there. Create a new fold line and just give it a little bit of a, a press to hold it in place. You do the same on the other side. So bring it in, just use your little finger there. If if you, like me, you haven't got much in the way of nails, you can just pop your bone folder in there just to ease it off. Once it starts, it'll go fine. And you might not be able to see this now because this is all folding over, but I'm doing exactly the same as I did with the other side. And what I could do is maybe next time I do something like this is position my phone slightly off to one side so you can see it from the side view. Anyway, so you're ending up with a shape like that. And the idea is that when you bring up these two sides, those two bits go in, and there's the basis of your handbag. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, just open up again just a little bit. Now these new shapes here, there's probably a name for, proper name for those, but I wasn't very good at maths when I was at school. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put, get the glue to go so you can actually see, I put a line of glue down there, just follow the shape and then just fill it in a little bit. You don't need a lot of glue with the, um, because it, we don't want to, it to ooze out the sides. So same again, just follow those fold lines or those score lines, fill it in. Okay, and then just press over like that and then just give a good old press down with your bone folder just to help that glue take. Okay, and providing you haven't put too much on, it doesn't matter if you've gone like that because it won't ease out the ooze out the sides there. Okay, and then you do the same on the other side. Now this side's going to be a little bit more difficult because that side's already stuck now. So let's just find that line there. Right, I can see the score line just says hard with this pattern because it's following this, exactly the line of the pattern. But basically, it's there, and then just do that. Oops, and then on this same on this side. How can you? That's it, to make sure you can see. There we go. Oops, oh, I just smudged that all over my fingers. Just bear with me a second, I've got a wipe in my bag. Let's just get rid of that glue because I don't want it sticking, don't want my fingers sticking to the paper. Okay, again, same again. Fold down flat, give it a good old press down like that. Okay, just to make sure that glue is taken. And like I said, providing you don't use too much, you won't have to worry about those flaps sticking. Okay, so the bag is starting to now look actually like a bag. Now, other demonstrators, when I've seen these bags made by other people with slightly different dimensions, they've left these flaps free. On my ones, I've actually glued these flaps down like that. It's up to you how you do it. It can be like an exploding, almost like an exploding handbag, can't it? Um, I don't think it'll make much difference. It just neatens up that little bit there, really, rather than having it sticking out like that. It just makes it meet there. So I'm going to do the same with these. Now this one, I'm going to keep the fo it folded, slightly folded. So basically I'm just going to put glue in that triangle there. Oh, and I put a little bit too much on that side. That's probably going to ooze out now. Basically like that. So it's the triangle that meets the piece that's already folded down. In case you're not sure which triangle when you're doing it. Okay. So let's start the other thing because that was done first. So what I'm going to do now is just fold it over. And this is going to be difficult. So I'm just going to fold it over flat like that and just hold it in place for a second until that glue goes. And I've just got a little bit of a, that's where I put too much glue on that side. And I've got my fingers again now. Okay, I'm just going to give that a little bit of press down with my bone folders, make sure it's stuck. 
and then do the same on this side. If I hold it like this, maybe I'll be able to see a bit better. So basically I'm just holding it in there. Oops, so I'm just holding it in there. I didn't if I move that out. No, I can't move it back because otherwise it comes undone. So okay, so you're gonna end up, it's gonna be look almost like a box with the funny sides. Okay. But now when you pull it to, it just sits so much nicer. Ooh, that's a little bit close, isn't it? I can't get it any I don't want to move the camera otherwise. Uh, anyway, so now we're gonna do these top bits. If I just bring it back for a second. Now we're going to do this top bit across here. So what I needed there is a couple of pieces, move that out of the way, a couple of pieces of matching card, okay? And this measures, I've got it written down somewhere, but I can't remember, seven and three eighths by one and three quarters. And then you score it down the middle, which is seven eighths of an inch, okay? So like, like that. And then again with the wet glue or whichever glue you prefer. I prefer the wet glue because like I said, it gives me a little bit of wiggly room. Just get your adhesive on those two halves. Like so. Okay, oops, near the edge there. Okay, and then just squeeze it. Don't let it touch, but just squeeze it a little bit like that. And then you'll find that you can match, match it up Let's do that like that. And there's going to be a little bit of overhang both sides. So once you've got it about central, you can just squeeze it down. And then I'm just going to use my bone folder. Yet always use my bone folder to push down the glue. I think it makes it stick so much better. And there we are. That's one side done. A little bit of a dent there. But... Okay, let's do the other side now. I was sat here this morning and the sun was streaming in the window. It's still sunny, it's still blue sky out there, but now the sun's moved around. It's creating shadows. So, but I do love sitting by the window and I do have a craft lamp here if it gets a little bit too shadowy. I don't know if it's going to make any difference to, it's a bit glary, isn't it? I'll leave it on just for a minute so you can see. So again, just give it a little, ease it back ready for uh, when it gets stuck onto your bag. And again, just very roughly. It doesn't matter if the glue's gone over the edges. You can, you might be able to see it just there because the ends of the card are actually going to be stuck down anyway, like that. So, okay. So I start to take shape now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in my old crocodile. I have got a hole punch like this, but the hole is too small. So I'm going to bring in my lovely big old crop crocodile and I've got it set on the larger hole, which is according to that is three sixteenths. But it just makes a nice size hole for the ribbon to go in. And I'm just going to go, in fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to just quickly work out so if I go like that so you want to come in maybe about half an inch either end and just put a little pencil mark and if you can see that it's a tiniest little pencil mark just there and it really is just so that I get my holes a bit more even if I was using a hand punch I'd be able to tell a bit easier but this thing because it kind of old bag seems to disappear into the machine that's it. That's the way I want it. Okay, so oops. Let me just work out where that hole's going to be. Oops. Okay. And the nice thing about this is I don't have to worry about my wrists. I've got a weak wrist from when I fractured my arm a year or so ago. Not that it's this hand, it's my left arm actually, but Okay, let me just do these holes very, very quickly for you. Uh, I can't see that pencil mark on that one. So we're just going to work it out roughly ourselves. I don't think I did mark it, actually. So hopefully that's about even. Okay, there we go. So let's move that out of the way. So now you've got your holes to put your ribbon in. And I'm going to be using coordinate ribbon. And obviously you can mix, mix mix and match or put in put a nice um uh, almost like a baker's twine you know thicker like a little rope 
what would you call it? I don't know what you'd call it, like a twine of some kind. Um, I'm using about 16 inches here. Where have my scissors gone? There they are. And cutting at an angle so that I can use that angle to thread the ribbon. Okay, this is the lovely fresh fig that goes along with the other ribbons that coordinate with the card and the paper. That's what I love about stamping up. Everything coordinates. So, in from the outside. Create a knot. Obviously, if you're using thinner um, handles, you'd make a smaller hole. But I'm, because this is quite thick, this ribbon, I want to um, use the larger holes. Now, here we go. See, that's one. I think that hole that I judged is slightly near the edge, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, where's my ribbon gone? There it is. Okay. If you find your ends are a little bit long, you can just snip them off a bit closer. I did think about maybe putting circles on to hide it but it's quite bulky so I might as well just leave it okay That's it, there we go. So that's the handles done. Now I'm going to do the flap, this flap here. And to do that, I have used, let's move everything out of the way, one of these. This is from the Lots of Labels Framelits dies. And they cut up nesting ones they are. So I'm using the largest one. And again, I've already pre-done this and here it is ready it works out that the halfway point is two and three eighths is the halfway point so i've just just very gently and i haven't creased that i haven't burnished it with the um with my bone fold i've just left it nice and soft that top and then that's going to go over like that so again this time i have roughly worked it out i can actually see where the lights coming in from this way i can see through the paper to work out where this bit is going on the outside of the bag so when I put the glue on I'll be able to work out roughly halfway I mean I can do it like that but you won't be able to see it so if you sit in front, in front of a window if you're doing this if you sit by a window and they've got the light coming in you'll be able to see so trusty old glue which I should have put the lid on so it's probably what's stuck now in the nozzle yeah there we go only on one side Let's put the lid on. So I think I'm nearly done with that now. So, like I said, I'm just going to do this by looking using the shadow from the window. Okay, that's about halfway across, and I'm just going to lay it down flat and just using my fingers. I won't use a bone folder this time in case it catches on the inside. So I'm just going to use my fingers just to hold that down. And there we are. So starting to go now. I might just give it a little bit of a press there. That's it. Now the magnets, which I've actually put away, are these little ones. I get mine from Spider Magnets. Um, don't ask me what they're called. They've got a funny name to them. But if you look up Spider Magnets, I'm sure they'll uh, you'll be able to find them. And these ones are tiny. These are about two eighths or a quarter of an inch. So very very strong. If I separate them, they actually jump together let's see if I can do that right. oh they're repelling each other oh there you go see <laughs> so make sure that you have got the the right side because there is a right and a wrong to magnets make sure they're stuck like that um, I'm going to get a glue dot now and I'm just going to stick it on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it roughly actually before I do that let's leave that there for a second what I've done to cover up the, if I bring the other bag back, to cover up the magnets, 
I've just put a, a, a circle. Oh, I've got glue on it. But a, a circle of card just to make sure that the, uh, the magnets are encased. And that's a one inch circle. So I'll just get two of those ready. And that's it. All right. Now, my couple of oh gosh, they're stuck to the. <laughs> and it's. Oh, it's gone the glue side down as well. Oh dear. Okay, we're there. Okay. So, coming in about that far, you allow yourself for this, the circle of card to go over the top. Okay, and then just press down and then get another glue dot and just pop it on the other side like that. Okay, and then just very gently, make sure your handbag's nice and even. Just very gently push that down and then get your fingers in. If you've got longer fingers, it'd be handy. And just give it a little press and then very gently ease up the flap again separating those two magnets I actually slid slid them apart so you know now that's where your circles of card are going to go so out with the glue one last time okay and then let's move that out of the way just for a second and then just put it over there try and get your magnet in the middle if you can and then I'm just going to lay it down flat and just press yeah that's about right and then just keep pressing and what you're going to do is you're going to create you're going to stick not only you're going to stick the glue down onto the circle onto the bag rather you're going to create a bit of a bump on the inside of your bag all right it's just where the paper is easing just to make sure that card really sticks well I don't know if you can you probably can't see it there's a little dimple just there Okay, and then we're going to do the same with this one. So, move the ribbon out of the way because I don't want that getting in. Okay, and then just place it over like that. And again, just give it a good old press down. You can see there's a bit of a dimple forming and you just need to hold that glue down. Or rather the card down so that the glue takes. Okay, and then you, as you can see, you can see the magnet in there but that's not going to come out. Okay, and then I'm not going to put it together just yet because I want that glue to have time just to set properly. And then lastly, just to finish off the bag, I'm using these little bows. And again, they are coordinating with the um, card colours. But what I'm going to do is they've got like a little foam thing on the back. I'm actually going to take that off, like a little dimension. I've just taken the ribbon off as well try and get that off because I don't want it to stick too high because there's already a bump on there I'll have to be careful how I put that together and then another glue dot and I think what I'm going to do because that ribbon has actually just come apart I'm just going to put that glue dot in there to stick the ribbon on so that the ribbon doesn't come undone like that so yes on the other ones I was a bit more careful I managed to get it off the pad off without loosening the ribbon so a little glue dot on the back and then where the little bump is you can just about make out where that magnet is up you might not be able to see it but I can I'll just put this mere just a smidgen above and then just press down and there we go and lovely so there we are so a beautiful little gift bag you can put your goodies in there. I might just make those knots a little bit bigger because that looks like it's coming through a bit. So yes, I can faff with those once it's um, once I'm off screen. So if I bring the other bag in, okay. And the little one I made first of all, like I said, I made a mistake. So the um, the score lines were slightly different on this one. So it ended up by looking at, even though it's still an eight, uh, a twelve by twelve, it's the sides are slightly higher that the means of capacity inside of the bag the um is um a bit too short really for the, the for the rock so i'm going to keep it off to one side so it doesn't keep popping open but there we go so there's these lovely little bags quite easy to make and um, didn't take too long at all did they even though i know i pre-prepared everything i'm just going to snip that little tiny bit off there i know i pre-prepared everything but even starting from scratch it doesn't take very long at all and it's nice to make little gift bags for people you care about. And like I said, you can fill them with anything you like. So there we are. 
those are my bags. When I eventually get more of the other papers, the powder pink and the lemon lime twist, I will um, make some more up. So I've got plenty in store and because I've got some birthdays coming up. Anyway, so I hope you liked watching and I hope you have a go. Um, do give me a thumbs up if you like it. And also, I always forget to ask this. Please do to subscribe to my channel as well so that you can see other things. Because I enjoy, I absolutely love spending time in my craft room. It's my little escape. It's my little haven. And I like to share what I do. And if I do something that you like and you enjoy and you'd like to have a go at yourself, please do leave a comment and let me know. And um, I look forward to meeting you online or on YouTube again soon. Okay, take care. Bye.